Good morning, Bobcats. Mr. Grange here. Thought I'd give a, an example problem of um, one of the Boyle's Law situations. Um, this is not one of your ten, but here's an example problem for you. If you can get this. Um, what is the volume in decimeters cubed of a gas at a pressure of 699 torr? which at 93.3 kilopascals pressure was 2,750 centimeters. So there's the, there's the problem for you. Um, write that down. First thing I wanted to review is just a little bit of volume, which we covered last semester. Um, but just to give you a heads up, volume, of course, is three-dimensional space. It can me be measured in either length times width times height, or a three-dimensional distance measurement. Um, usually we use something like centimeters cubed, um, or we can also use liters, which in this case a centimeters cubed is equal to, or the same thing as a milliliter. A decimeter cubed, which is a thousand centimeters cubed, is equal to one liter. And of course, there are a thousand milliliters in one liter. So those are equal to each other. So first, just a little review of volume measurements. <clears throat> so from this problem, what I know is that I can assign my, my P1 as um, 699 Tor. And it doesn't really matter what you, what you label as P1, V2, P1, P2, V1, V2, as long as you have the correct um, variables together. In this case, you have P1 being 699 Tor. You have your P2 as 93.3 kilopascals. Okay, and you have your V2. This volume goes with, this was at this volume, at this pressure, 2,700. 50 uh, centimeters cubed. So there's a couple conversions here. So this is what I know, and I'm looking for, just put here, V1 is what we're looking for. So of course, the equation would be P1V1 equals P2V2. If I'm looking for V1, then I can divide both sides by P1 to cancel it here. Okay. So there's your relationship. As the pressure goes up, the volume goes down, right? The inverse relationship. Um, now I'm going to do this all in one step because I like to use the chart. Um, you could, though, if you notice, the two pressures are different units. You could separately convert the tors to the kPa or the kPa to the tor. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then your centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed because it wants this it wants this volume in decimeters cubed. I'm going to do it all in here. But you could and then you could do that separately and then put it plugged it into the um, v1 equals p2 v2 over p1 equation. Um, but I'm just going to do it all here one foul swoop. So my p2 would be uh, 93.3 kilopascals. Um, multiply that by my V2, which is 2,750 centimeters cubed, okay, and I'm going to divide that by P1, which would be uh, 690, oops, 699 Tor, right, um, and so different units, that, that would give me the math, but these, since these are different units, I just put my standards, both of these are going to cancel, so I'm just going to put uh, 760 Tor here, three significant digits, divided by 101.325 kilopascals. And then for my volume, because we have um, a thousand centimeters cubed is equal to one decimeter cubed, we can just plug this all in. So, if we take 
Okay, trust the calculator here. Make sure my units all cancel here. My tors go away. Kilopascals go away. Centimeters cubed go away. So I end up with decimeters cubed. Perfect. So take my 93.3, 93.3 kilopascals. I'm just going to multiply everything on the top and divide by everything on the bottom. Times 2750 times 760 times 1 divided by 699 um, divided by 101.325 divided by 1,000. Um, not 100,000. This gives me an answer of with uh, three significant digits, 2.75 decimeters cubed. So hopefully you caught that, but um, the, the conversion for volume is 1,000 centimeters cubed is equal to one decimeter cubed. That's your conversion, or uh, 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter that might be on your equation sheet but i'm not sure uh, hopefully that helps um good luck with those 10 problems hope you're having fun let me know if you have any questions thanks for playing physics today